Good day everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about my 1955 loadable Hoyle Samba guitar. A year ago there was a uh, friend who told me that he owns an old guitar, which is in a very very bad condition. He as a guitarist said that he can't see any chance to make the playable guitar. And partly he was right. The back of the body was broken, but the biggest problem was that the neck had a big big bow and also a sideways bow. This guitar was used with steel strings and this has weakened the neck because the guitar has not rusted. Of course, first I was thinking about how to solve this problem. I thought I can install a truss rod, but then I dropped this idea because this would have been a too hard job for me. I made some photos on the neck just to make it more visible how the neck was bowed and I noticed that the main neck bow starts near to the place where the neck joins to the body. So something like this. I thought I will cut a line into the neck from the side of the body just until the point where the bowing starts and will glue this part onto the bottom part of the neck. And this is what I did. Here you can see a picture why the glue dries. I also put a screw in it to make sure it holds. After the glue dried I shot another photo and here you can see the differences. I was partly satisfied with the result. Now this is a photo where you can see the first three frets. Can you see the spots in the fingerboard behind the second fret? This guitar was used a lot. Some holes are a millimeter deep at the center. Also, you can see that these frets are not the original frets. You can see this at the side. Originally these frets did not cut a line into the white bindings. When I was taking out the old frets, some parts of the wood was damaged. So I had to refill these. When I did this, I refilled some of the holes at the first three frets, but I also left some in the original condition. When I was looking at the body in more detail, I noticed that it was repainted. This was visible at the bindings, where it was noticeable that the glue tape was used to cover those parts which had to remain unpainted. After I sanded the guitar, I noticed that the wood is very very dry and the painting just disappears on it. I took the guitar to a specialist and he said the same. The wood is very very old and dried out and he suggested me to apply a special material to the body and then to apply the painting on this. We thought about the height the bindings to the glue tape, but we did not want a visible line at the body and binding joint, so we decided to paint the whole guitar. And of course we used the original black color. We used the glue tape only at the binding on the fretboard and we also left the front of the head in the original state. So this is what we did. Actually it was the specialist who has done this job. After painting I left the guitar and used where I could the same old screws to fit the hardware on the guitar. I also found the P90 saw box pickup at home, which I fitted on the guitar on the next side, and wired a tone and volume clock to it, uh, which I placed on the pickguard, and of course there is a jack socket on the side of the guitar.